Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Wallen with Dairy Management Corporate. I'm so happy to bring you another discussion and more insights from our checkoff leadership. This conversation is an extension of the Your Dairy Checkoff podcast and is designed to provide a more concise look at dairy promotion efforts with national and local leaders. Today, I'm joined by Tim Stubbs. My colleague at Dairy Management Incorporated, Tim serves as Senior Vice President of Food Safety and Product Research. Tim, how are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having me, Scott. You know, I'm so excited to talk to you about uh, food safety. I know this is right in your wheelhouse, and it's a subject that the dairy checkoff takes very seriously and, and should be very important to our dairy farmers. You may not think about it as much as you do. So let's start with that question right there. Why does food safety matter uh, to dairy farmers? Why is it such a big checkoff priority? Well, thank you, Scott. That's a great question. Um, so if you really think about it, we're all in the business of making food, nourishing our customer, really feeding the country. And we can't do that if the food we make isn't safe. If you think about it, you consume the food, your, your friends, your family, and nobody wants to make anybody sick. Beyond that, economically, you know, for any company that has a problem, often a food safety issue or a recall is at minimum expensive, frequently puts them out of business. And when we have really big recalls, we'll actually impact the entire industry and we'll drive down the entire volume of a commodity group. Uh, back in 2011, there was a cantaloupe recall. I don't know if most people remember it or not, but it was literally a 40% decline in cantaloupe volumes for over a year. And a major impact, there was farmers who were just simply plowing their fields under because there was nowhere to sell it, even though they had not been involved in the issue. So that's a lot of the reason why we focus on this. It's to protect our reputation. And really, it's a great uh, source of growth for dairy as well, with a lot of small producers, artisan farmstead, and uh, a number of the farmers that I meet actually are making cheese and ice cream on farm. The thing about the food safety work that you're part of, this isn't just the dairy checkoff. This is really the whole industry that's at the table. Can you talk us through a little bit about exactly who do we work with uh, on food safety? Yeah, that's a great question and it's a great story. Uh, the reality is, is the checkoff and DMI puts very, very little into this from a resource standpoint, really yours truly and a little bit of a couple other people's time. Um, but all the money and all the expertise and most of the work is done by the processors. It's done with partnerships with the, with academia. It's done through grants. So this is really one where the rest of the industry has stepped up and the farmers are able to convene and really set the agenda. So it, the Innovation Center for U.S. Dairies, I know most of you are familiar, is where we convene the industry. So we bring together all the different aspects, not just the farmer, but this is where the farmer priorities that can't be executed by the farmer, this is where we influence the rest of the industry. So in the case of food safety, I have the head of food safety quality from 18 of the largest dairy companies as part of my leadership team. Eight of those are co-ops. Um, a couple of those are private companies. And then in addition, I have a couple of dairy farmer board members, one who makes cheese, one who makes ice cream. They're there for advice to make sure what we're doing is applicable to the really small guys. And I got to tell you, like the head of quality, the executive vice president global from some of these companies is just jazzed to sit with a small cheesemaker and hear his perspective and understand how things are really working at his level. So for all of those folks, it's really a give back. They literally are giving their time and their money and they're paying for their own travel. They're usually hosting and sponsoring our work so that we don't have to put any checkoff funds into it. And then behind that 20 people, there's 120 volunteers. So this is people who own small ice cream companies, people who own small cheese companies, it's academics, it's graduate students, and lots and lots and lots of the middle tier in the processors. So the director of quality over two or three plants for Dairy Farmers of America or Land of Lakes or Hill or Hillmar, Schreiber, Leprino, really all the big dairy companies that you know, we have volunteers who work on this with us. It's so great to see companies large and small unite over food safety, because I think I know I've heard heard you say this before that that an issue for one company is an issue for the whole industry. So really good to see everybody kind of come together and rally um, and, and support one another that way. You know, last thing I want to ask you is obviously your group has come together and created a lot of resources. Can you yeah. just walk through what some of those resources are and where can people find them? Yeah, that, that's another great question. And it's really the core of what we do and where there is a lot of work. There's kind of two groupings, I would say, two broad groupings. There are 
things that are new to the world, and this is where the power of the Innovation Center really comes together. There are things that some people know a good answer, other people know a different good answer. And what we do is we get them all together and we work through, we call that best practice sharing. And sometimes the big companies know and the small companies don't, but frequently it's a, how do you do this? How do you do this? And then at the end of the day, we'll get a group together and we'll do a webinar on it. We'll write it up. We'll put it into one of our guidance documents. So our most recent January was best practices for keeping foreign materials out of your product. So how do I make sure there's not, you know, bits of plastic in my cheese? Um, amazing things come come out, and it's amazing to me to amazing for me to see somebody who's been an expert, who's world recognized, go. I never thought of that. That's really good. I'm going to go back home and I'm going to implement it. So we have multi day workshops. We have a 150 page guidance document. We got some pretty deep stuff in that class. I think more importantly, what we've done is we've said. Okay, you guys pretty much know this. You know how to clean a plant. You know how to do monitoring to understand the plant is clean. You know how to do in the micro work. Let's teach everybody else. There's a whole suite of tools available. Um, we use usdairy.com backslash food safety. There is an artisan section within that, which is really aimed at the smaller producers, and that's usdairy.com backslash artisan. And uh, within that, you will find we have two curated websites aimed at small producers. We have safeicecream.org and we have makesafecheese.org. And those are tools that are really specifically curated. So I'm making 10, 20, 40,000 pounds of cheese a year. Here's what I need to do for my employee training. Here's a video. Here's a four minute video all your employees should watch before they walk in the door. Here's what I need to do to put my templates together, to have a proper food safety plan. So if I get the chance to sell to a big grocery store and they ask for that, I can say, here it is. Another resource that we have, and this is something we work together with our academic partners and, and received a $400,000 USDA grant. We have free education. We have biweekly office hours. If you wanna understand how to control your allergens, you just jump on that one. These are done through Cornell. Also through that same program, you can call an 800 number. So again, you're on. You're making cheese at a farm level. You're making ice cream. You, your your neighbors, your your you know cousin is running a small ice cream company, um, and that's what I find a lot. I find that there's a lot of farm families where part of the family is running the dairy farm, but two of the siblings have gone off and started an ice cream company, and it's become a multi-state regional player. And for them, they can say, "I'm struggling with." What does this mean, right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing my environmental monitoring program, but I don't understand what, what the code means by the word Kappa. You can just call a free 800 number um, or send an email and, and it's actually manned at Cornell and it's not just academics. The, the first academic you hit there actually used to run Unilever North America's ice cream quality group. So we've got real great expertise lined up um, between those two websites, the 800 number, the bi-weekly office hours. If you know you have a question or a need, there's resources to help you get those answers. The other big thing that we did, and most of these we've done a couple of years ago, is we said, what are the basics? How do people get a basic learning? Oh, and by the way, we know you get up at 6 a.m. and go to bed at 10, and you gotta do the books, and you gotta pay the employees, and you gotta, so we've created online food safety education courses you can take them at your own speed. You can take one module, go away, come back a week later, take another module. Those are hosted through North Carolina State University. They were done by the Innovation Center. They were vetted by the best experts in the industry. They were written by a combination of academics and people just volunteering their time. We have one for ice cream. We have one for cheese. And those are, again, both available on those websites. So that's just, that's a little bit of it, Scott. Yeah, it's amazing what all is there available, not just to the to the large and small players of the industry, but the, again, like you said, for those dairy farmers that might want to get involved in some uh, production of cheese, ice cream, or, or of milk. Well, Tim, I appreciate your time today. Uh, so great catching up with you. And dairy farmers who want to learn more about their dairy checkoff, be sure to visit dairycheckoffpodcast.com. Thanks a lot, Tim. Thanks, Scott.